What is the cost of resiliency? Montpelier is in the process of rebuilding now, adhering to new floodplain regulations. But it's a costly endeavor, and as Calvin Cutler reports, some are wondering how they're going to pull it off. For years, the flood-prone capital has actually been building structures above the floodplain, but now they have to adhere to new regulations, bringing electrical and heating equipment above as well. Montpelier is part of the National Flood Insurance Program, and under local regulations adopted five years ago, utilities have to be two feet above the base flood level. If we wanted to you know, eventually move ourselves in a place where we keep getting more and more resilient, we're going to have to start moving things out of our basement. Boilers, electric panels, elevator equipment, internet hookups, and more. Montpelier Planning and Zoning Director Mike Miller says making buildings and their utilities flood resilient will save money in the long run. What comes with regulations is the requirement to move it up. What doesn't come with the regulations is money to help people do that because it's not, it's not cheap. The cost has homeowners and property owners scratching their heads. It looks like it's going to more than double the costs of this whole cleanup and getting things back. City Councilor Tim Haney owns and manages 11 buildings downtown. You, we couldn't even have stood here and walked through after the flood. He shows us infrastructure in one basement, which was flooded all the way to the ceiling. Equipment for the elevator, the boiler, hookups to district heat, and electrical panels all will have to be moved upstairs. It's real significant money to move it, and I don't even have real solid estimates yet, which we're going to just have to do it. Following the floods, nearly all of the downtown buildings will need new utilities, and some are trying to wrap their arms around how to be compliant with the regulations and how to pay for it. And there's not a lot of time to, to be creative, so it's really relying on a lot of people getting all the advice we can quickly. And then you just have to choose a track and do it. Barry has similar requirements. This crew rebuilding on the north side of town was being creative and storing boilers in an enclosed box in an apartment. City leaders in Montpelier acknowledge that the work will be daunting, but they say it's needed in the long run. If we can get people to flood code, that's the best answer to the question of how do we be more resilient in the future. We'll have a lot of mud in the streets to clean up, but our buildings would be safe. Facing these mounting costs, many here in town tell me that they'll need additional help from Congress or from the Vermont legislature. But even then, they say that they'll have to wait and see. Reporting in Montpelier, Galvin Cutler, Channel 3 News.